Hello and welcome back to the third part of the three-part video tutorial on how to double the performance of your Windows computer. Now, I'm sorry I didn't upload this a long time ago, and somebody said it was about two years since I uploaded the first two, but anyway, I'm back and I'm uploading this for you guys so you can see the rest of my awesome tutorial. Um, what we're going to be dealing with today is disabling programs that you don't want to remove. So in earlier videos, we got rid of programs with CCleaner and we got rid of stuff that's automatically installed with PCD Crapifier. And now we're going to disable programs from starting up with our computer if we don't want them there straight away. Now, the advantage to this is it's going to be a lot faster after you hit your power button to when your computer's actually usable. You'll have a lot of things running in the background. You can see on my taskbar, I still got quite a lot, even though I've disabled a lot before recording. And these programs are slowing down your computer. Now that's perfectly fine. You may have had your computer for a year or two. You're going to build up lots of programs. Now, if you don't want all of them, then this is the trick for you, okay? So click Start and go to Run for Windows XP or um, or other operating systems which have that choice, or with Windows Vista and 7, type msconfig. Now this is what you type into your run bar. It's the Microsoft configuration for startup. Now what we want to go to to look at programs is the startup tab, and this will now list everything that starts up with your computer when you hit the power button. So you can see that this is quite a long list. When you first get your computer, it's probably only going to come down to about here, I think. That's how many programs that you'll have starting up in total. So, as you can see, we've still got quite a, a lot of these, and I've, dis I've manually disabled all of these that you can see here for myself. So now we're going to start removing these startup objects one by one and we want to get rid of as much as we can ideally but you don't need to get rid of everything. Obviously there are some things that you do want to be there as soon as you start up, as soon as you hit the power button. So you can navigate through these one by one and think, okay so that's my mouse, that's audio, I want these there. Those are my keyboard, I want those there. Skype. Do I really want Skype straight away? No, I'll probably open it later so I can remove that. Don't know what that is. Now, if you don't know what one of these processes is, don't be afraid just to uncheck it. You could uncheck everything in this list and you'd still be okay. So it isn't something about um, uh, is it going to work afterwards or is it not? You can just remove it. If it screams at you and says, no, it's not started, I'm going to die, then come back and re-enable it again. That's no problem. It's not going to be the end of the world. And as you can see, I've removed quite a lot. So make that your challenge. See if you can remove as many as I have there. What's that, about 100? I don't know. Um, so other things that you want to be removing are things like Adobe Acrobat. Now everyone uses Adobe Acrobat. Everybody has a PDF reader to see PDF files. But why is it going to be there on startup? I don't need it straight away, do I? I I'm going to open the PDF file later and then I'm going to read it. But I don't want it straight up when I start my computer. Same with iTunes. iTunes down here. I don't want you up straight away. I want you up when I plug in my iPhone and that's going to be something that happens later so I can remove these from startup click apply and we've just removed a few more seconds from the boot time possibly about 30 seconds two minutes in my computer I've probably removed about five minutes worth now that's a lot of time that you're saving now the second thing is services now what a service is is a background helper to a program you can't see it it's invisible but it's there running processes, running tasks for the program that called it. Now, these pair up with what's going on in the startup menu. So, for example, if I looked at Google, Google Update here, I can see in services, if I scroll down, 
that there is a Google Update service. In fact, there's three of them. So if I were to uh, um, take off Google Update, um, that's their desktop experience thing, then I would also remove these three services. Now, you can also see that there are a lot of Microsoft services. Now, because these were here when you got your computer, there's no real reason to disable many of these, except for a few like BitLocker Drive encryption. If you don't use that, then you don't need it. You can just stop it. Same for Bluetooth. If you don't have Bluetooth, then you can just disable it. But we're not really going to concentrate on this for now. We're going to concentrate on services installed by programs. Now, I've already uninstalled, or sorry, unchecked the services that I don't want to start up straight away. A lot of them will start up when they're needed. But as I said with the last one, you could just disable all of them and see what happens. And if anything yells, then you just start up the relevant service. So those our services. Okay, so now we've disabled the programs that we don't want to start up with our computer. Now we're going to concentrate with delaying programs. So this isn't disabling them entirely, this is just making sure that they don't start up right away, but you're going to need it in say five minutes time. Now I've downloaded a piece of software called Startup Delayer. Now there's a lot of similar programs on the internet, so you can just take your pick this particular one allows for automatic delaying. When you have it installed on your computer, it will see what goes on when you start up and adjust itself automatically. But we can also do the same with manual delaying. So if I choose Google Update, I can then choose manual delay and I can select, say, three minutes. So I don't want Google Update to start for three minutes. That means my computer has an extra three minutes time to start up as many programs as it can before you get onto the more bulky ones and the ones that you're not going to need. Um, an example of one that you won't need straight away may be printing. Because who prints as soon as their computer started? You've got to wait until everything's there. You've got to open your documents. You've got to open that email before you start printing, right? So you're not going to need it straight away and you can put a delay on it. Now, I'll leave you to play around with this program. I'm sure that it will um, tell you straight away what needs to be done and how you can do it. The next thing we're going to worry about is graphics. Now, I'm saying this because of net tops and netbooks and anything which doesn't have much of a graphics capability. If you do have a powerhouse computer you can probably stop here that's enough for you but for people with smaller computers portable ones mobile ones this next step is quite advantageous now you may have seen that windows has this cool graphics thing going on especially in windows vista and windows 7 this is stuff like transparent control bars, transparent menus, and these other graphical enhancements. Now, if you're on a netbook, you definitely don't really want these here because you want to go straight to your documents. You want to go straight to the internet without any performance decrease from boxes. So what we can do in Windows Vista and Windows 7, I'll come onto Windows XP in a minute, we can right click, go to personalize, and we can see here a list of themes. It's very similar in Windows Vista. Um, and down the bottom we can see basic and classic modes. Now we're going to run a little comparison test. So if you can see this box, now bearing in mind I have quite a good graphics card, but it's still juddering quite a lot. Now if I set it to Windows Basic, look at the difference it makes, how much smoother it is now. Same again for Windows Classic, go one step further, it's smoother still. So I'm going to stick with Windows Classic if I was with a, uh, if I was with a mobile computer. So now for how to do this on Windows XP. If I go to Documents or Computer or any one of these on Windows XP and go to Tools, then Folder Options, you will see a list here. There will be a list of all sorts of graphics options that you can select. Now you can click Optimize for Performance Correct me if I'm wrong about this, but this is as I remember it. Optimize for performance and it will uncheck all of them. Or you can go through and check each one and you'll end up with a similar effect where it's a lot more responsive. Look how more responsive this was compared to earlier. Now that is about it for my tutorial. So 
thank you for watching and I'm very sorry about being very late on uh, uploading this but that shall provide you with ways to at least double your computer performance and I'll see you next time. If you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask them in the comments. Please like, subscribe and wait for more techie videos to come.